Good evening. Uh, we are at this lovely city of Liverpool, attending the Global Indian Business Meet organized by Varasis. And uh, I have with me Samod Bhargav and I have with me Rajiv Kaul. And we are going to discuss uh, manufacturing as a growth model for India. And my question starts from you, Samod, and you have been part of the telecom and the IT sector for a long time. Now, how do we shift, as per Mr. Modi, into the labor intensive uh, manufacturing sector? And I use the word labor intensive because of the population concern. And is it the way forward? Is that viable proposition? Most certainly, I think the focus uh, has to be first on labor policy, which enable not only generating new jobs, but retaining new jobs. And uh, people talk about a word called hire and fire. Uh, I'm not saying hire and fire just for the sake of reducing numbers. There has to be a welfare net. There has to be some uh, backup available for those who are temporarily laid off. And that's a structure which we need to create, whether at the corporate level or the government level. But on the other hand, the real issues are of this organized sector, uh, which comprises perhaps only 2 to 3 percent of the labor force, being exploited beyond the mutual interest of the corporates, the manufacturing sector and the labor by the politicians. The union activity has not been uh, sort of uh, rationalized yet. Uh, if there was today a confidential or a secret ballot for any issue and if these stakeholders themselves were to dialogue and negotiate, I'm sure 99 percent of the problems would be not there. Okay. It is the outsider uh, political interfer uh, interference with the relationship of labor and management which causes problems. Of course, the management is responsible to have good labor relations, but there is that little intervention needed from the government uh, to put productivity, quality, discipline in focus. Now, despite all those uh, sort of issues being right there, proven, uh, the employer is not at uh, sort of flexibility or freedom mm -hmm. to manage this result. So I think that's very important this, this part of it. Uh, to come as number one. Number two, uh, India has gone through a fair amount of uh, inverted uh, duty structures. The foreign trade FTAs, uh, which they have signed with a number of countries in rush, some have delivered some positive, but net-net that has been negative for Indian manufacturing industry because the, it's not level playing field. Our raw materials, our transaction costs uh, are much higher than competing uh, sources for the same manufactured goods, whether they are coming from China or Thailand or uh, anywhere else. So I think these two things have to be put right as priority number one and two okay. to increase manufacturing uh, role, which is essential for generating employment. Thank you very much, Sabod. Now, coming to you, Rajiv, and I take on for a point which Sabod said, he talked about labor reforms. And he talked about that. And you coming from a place like Calcutta, which is supposed to be the heart of the labor problem issue. Now, the question to you is twofold. A, do you think there is a political will and the consensus possible to touch labor reforms? Because that's one part of it. And secondly, linked to that is the land acquisition problem. And you come from the nano territory. So land acquisition and labor reforms, two of the places which people have really not talked about. You talked about balloons and all, but at the moment people have not. Do they have that comes? do so. If they don't have, I think we have stories over before it starts. And that's, I want your assessment because you are a hard-nosed person who's been in the heart of the problem. Yeah, you're right, General. And uh, But having said that, I think one needs to clarify, uh, particularly for the international audience, that uh, the both these subjects, labor and land, uh, there's a lot of state laws which govern them. Yeah. And so the action, in a way, sifts substantially from the center to the states. Now, some of the states have the gumption to tackle these. Mm. Uh, and I think they have tackled, uh, most states have tackled it on the land area. Mm. Uh, but four states have also tackled it in the labor area. So there has been a big name being made. But cosmetic touches only. Uh, well, that's a big name. Okay. Uh, that's a big name. Yes, and, you right. know, because it's a, it's a very, very politically sens sensitive uh, issue. And uh, it, it is a lot of votes. Um, and it's a kind of a subject which is very emotive. And therefore, you know, in terms of elections and in the states, you have elections all the time. You have panchayat elections, then you have the regular 
uh, municipal elections, and you have the state elections. So it, you know there's a lot of electioneering going on all the time, and therefore this emotive aspect needs to be considered. But having considered all that, I think one look needs to look at the steps the government is planning to take to create manufacturing jobs. And I think the big, big, big opportunity are the four industrial corridors which are coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Uh, at, uh, the, the, the first corridor, which is the uh, New, New Delhi Mumbai uh, corridor, yeah. uh, it's 1,460 kilometers yeah, roughly. Right. It's going through six states. You're going to have 25 cities. Mm. The cities are not just going to be smart cities, but they're also going to be manufacturing cities. Yeah. So this is where the jobs are going to come up. Now, once this is completed, and for this, let me tell you, there's $100 billion already committed from Japan to do this. So mm. you have a lot of seed fund funding available for this. And a lot of work's already taken place. But on top of this, you have now the Amritsar-Calcutta corridor. You have the Bangalore-Chennai uh, cor cor corridor and the Bangalore-Mumbai corridor. So with these four corridors, I see over the next 15, 20 years, mm. huge activity taking place. Uh, and, and huge manufacturing activity and jobs being created. Uh, having said that, uh, one big problem in, in manufacturing or uh, the lack of manufacturing is our infrastructure is so poor. You talk of ports, yeah, well, yeah, you talk of roads, warehousing, warehousing, no, there, there's no power to have uh, economic production. I, I the take catch one more point of yours. You know, everything is time related. Now, if you want to do the kind of manufacturing that you and Samuel talked about, do we have the skill set? If not, how are we going to upskill the people to be part of the manufacturing stream that you try to create and uh, which comes first, which comes later yeah. on, there's one part. And secondly, I was talking about this, that yeah, infrastructure wise, that will that keep pace? Yeah. We're talking about the corridors, but the ports, the warehouses, the cold chains, the broadband, the cloud, all this thing required, could require a lot of thinking by people to uh, do so. I think basically, uh, the skill set has been a myth which has been talked about all the time. Corporates and our own interests will be, we will keep on training people. Let there be an opportunity. Okay. Today, in fact, there's a mismatch. We have, we have unemployment, we don't have employability, but if I have a market opportunity, I will train people and move ahead. Okay. To my mind, manufacturing sector would be able to manage that quite as quickly. Yeah, I, I, would, I would actually endorse what Subod is saying. And if you look at the IT, you have people being trained by yeah. the tens of thousands yeah. per year. So it can, be done the, yeah, it can be done and it can be done in manufacturing as well. We have apprentices. When people come in, we have apprentices. So, we'll you, know? that. so you, you can have this. The big advantage is we have the youth. We have them in large numbers. Absolutely. So we have the youth. We've also got skill centers. The skill centers are being upgraded along with the interaction and support from industry. So I'm quite bullish in this, but it cannot be done overnight. It's going to take a time frame, and I'd say the time frame is more like a 10 to 15 year time frame. And I would just like to add that over the years, Indian worker has become a mind just not hands and feet. He has learned quality, he is delivering quality. Oh, great. The managements have become focused. Mm. It's the competitiveness despite the quality because of the cost of structure, uh, we are getting out of manufacturing and allowing imports from normal and FTA. So, so therefore you mean to say the Made in India tag will sell? Yes, absolutely. That's the, thank you. On that note, we end this uh, discussion. Both agree that Made in India tag will sell and manufacturing sector is the next place to go to. Thank you. Thank you.